this is definitely one of the more unorthodox versus battles that i've covered and at first glance it's not one i thought would be interesting at all and you probably thought the same thing we're going to be talking about kabuto versus obito as they appear in the fourth war well even that's a little vague we're not going to be talking about jubito or any form of obito past that but rather white mask obito versus dragon sage kabuto this battle has some fairly insignificant narrative behind it as far as it happening in the actual story as these two in the war were on the same side virtually but their two battles more specifically obito versus kakashi guy and naruto and Kabuto versus Edoitachi and Ms. Sasuke are presented as one of the big three battles of the war, the third of which obviously being Madara versus the five Kage. Arguing which of these battles is more significant or important than the other to the war might not be too crucial to the overall outcome of the fight, but it's still something I want to comment on considering it's not really something I've ever heard anyone else talk about. If you want to skip this part of the video and go right into the specific 1v1, I'll have my editor put a timestamp on the screen for you to skip to. If you like this type of video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video as it helps out a lot and I really do appreciate it, but let's talk about which one of these battles is more important. There are a few ways we can possibly break down which of these battles is more important to the war. One, the characters participating in them. Two, statements from the characters in the series. And three, the effect of each battle being won. Number one makes it pretty hard to argue for Madara's battle as any of the Kage dying doesn't matter to the story at this point. They've all served their purpose narratively. But it then puts Kabuto and Obito's battle on a similar level of importance because of Naruto and Sasuke's respective participation in each battle. But then Obito's battle sort of edges it out in terms of importance because he's fighting the Nine Tails and Eight Tails, which are the only two remaining Biju to resurrect the Ten Tails at full power. Even though Obito does later do this with less chakra than he wanted, a full power resurrected ten tails would have murked the alliance easily. Number two gets us virtually nowhere as well, as the only thing to imply one battle is more important than the other is Itachi going after Kabuto instead of going with Naruto and B to fight Obito, who he considers as moderate at this point. The issue is Itachi's under a Genjutsu to protect the village at this point, and he has no idea Obito has the Renegon or six Biju at his disposal. So from Itachi's perspective, even though Obito is a threat, him knowing how Obito operates, which is typically sending other people to do his work for him like with the Akatsuki gathering Biju and in the novels him getting some Uchiha to work for him against the village would deem him as less of a threat than Kabuto. Moving into number three, Madara's battle being won did nothing except gain Obito another teammate but no one even knew that Kage were defeated until Madara said so to Naruto. Kabuto's battle being won also did help the alliance stop fighting but ever since Naruto's interference with his KCM clones the alliance was already on the winning side of the war against the Edo and the White Zetsu. This I I think probably gives it to Obito in terms of who has the more important battle due to edging him out in category number one, but we can move on to the power scaling now. First I'd like to go over Kabuto's speed as well as some misconceptions I want to quickly address before going over how him and Obito directly compare to each other and how their abilities would factor into the fight. With Kabuto, a lot of people tend to misinterpret the way his fight with EMS Sasuke and Edo Itachi went due to the fact that Sasuke and Itachi weren't trying to kill him in some scenes from Itachi's Izanami, an illusion constructed around the pattern of Kabuto constantly failing to gain the upper hand against Itachi, until he comes to turn with his personal flaws of course. That being said, people often forget Kabuto also lacked killer intent when it came to Sasuke and was only trying to regain control of Itachi. Within the context of these factors, there's really nothing to suggest Kabuto, Sasuke, or Itachi held back their speed, power, or that of their techniques but much rather the way they fought and aimed their attacks such as Sasuke and Itachi aiming for Kabuto's tail at certain points or Kabuto attempting to swallow and capture Sasuke rather than outright killing or injuring him. Also since all three combatants lack killer intent here, there's no way to say any one combatant is pulling their punches more than the other. The manga also tends to make it very clear during the actual fight Kabuto held the upper hand in the 1v2. With the volume summary stating Sasuke and Itachi needed to team up to have any chance of beating Sage Kabuto, with that out of the way, the first thing I'd like to go over is Kabuto's insane speed. Kabuto was consistently shown to dodge attacks from EMS Sasuke and his Susano, as well as Itachi. The Susano and its attacks are stated to be faster than the user several times by characters like Obito and Donzo, and there are even some examples of this in Itachi's fight with Nagato. While this speed would indicate Sage Kabuto is well above the likes of Sasuke and Itachi in terms of physical reaction and invasion speed, the same cannot be said about the speed of his physical attacks or that of most of his techniques. Sasuke and Itachi were consistently reacting to Kabuto's attacks and responding with ones of their own, 
like the Amaterasu or when Itachi was able to use Sasuke's sword to clash with Kabuto. I would assume the main reason for the difference between the speed he can dodge and the speed he can attack is probably due to the fact a large emphasis of the Sage Mode Imp is the way it enhances the user's reaction speed and ability to sense their surroundings. So as far as speed goes, Sage Kabuto is fast enough to dodge attacks from enemies even faster than Sasuke and Itachi like their Susanos, but is more so comparable to them in terms of how fast he can actually approach and attack an enemy or launch his techniques and this is what largely contributes to his superiority over Sasuke and Itachi, especially within their fight. Moving on to Obito, like Kabuto, there are some misconceptions surrounding how strong this version of Obito is. For one, a lot of people seem to think he's weaker or no stronger than before he had the Rinnegan due to the chakra cost of maintaining it. However, we're told the exact opposite, despite the toll it may take on Obito's stamina by Obito himself, when he describes how powerful the Rinnegan made him, in the weekly release of the manga which says the Rinnegan pushed Obito even closer to perfection. Obito also displays blatantly better durability feats, eating Rasengans from KCM1 Naruto compared to before where he was damaged from attacks by Sikitachi and base Minato who is implied to be weaker than Sage Naruto in terms of attack power. Some people will also use this fight with Kakashi to downplay him. However, as I've said in previous videos, there's lots of evidence such as blatant statements from Obito and the fact he's actually tanked the attack that he later let Kakashi stab him with, so I won't dwell on that too much here, just know Kakashi is definitely not as strong as Obito. Obito was just actually bullying KCM1 Naruto in the beginning of their fight, effortlessly beating him up, with Naruto remarking he couldn't land a single hit on Obito after he dodged and phased through his chakra arms. Like the Susano, Naruto's chakra arms are consistently shown to attack faster than his body, like back in the final valley during part 1 against Sasuke, or during the war arc against the second Tsuchikage. The manga also tops this all off by telling us Obito's power is overwhelming compared to Naruto's, even when he had the help of Kakashi, Guy, and Killer B who could all keep up with Naruto. KCM1 Naruto is also shown being able to keep up with both EMS Sasuke and Edo Itachi, so this alone should tell you guys that Obito would have been just as much of a threat if it were him fighting Itachi and Sasuke instead of Kabuto. On top of this, Obito also displays better feats later on after only taking Naruto seriously when he uses KCM2 with the manga saying Naruto needs this power to take on Obito. Obito is shown fast enough when using Kamui to react to KCM2 Naruto and his chakra arms when pressing alongside him and Edo Madara. To give you guys an idea of just how much faster KCM2 Naruto are than KCM1, KCM2 Naruto throws the outer path change at Obito, who reacts after noting the attack moves faster than the chains wrap around the target, like when Obito was able to successfully restrain KCM1 Naruto this way. So as you guys should be able to see here, Obito should have the advantage as far as speed goes, since even though Kabuto isn't as slow as KCM1 Naruto or EMS Sasuke in terms of how fast he can dodge, none of his attacks would be fast enough to hit Obito, and while it's possible in Sage Mode, Kabuto is able to dodge attacks from Obito, Obito is just far better showings in the area of speed based on his fights with KCM2 Naruto, who is stronger and faster than KCM1 Naruto, EMS Sasuke, and Edo Itachi. Next, I'd like to take some time to go over the abilities of each combatant to give you guys a better idea of how this fight may actually play out. Like Orochimaru, Kabuto has a lot of snake-themed abilities and can use a lot of his mentor's old techniques like the Shadow Striking Snake, snake style substitution, and even snake anatomy such as the ability to shield his eyes from vision based attacks like Obito's ocular genjutsu. After surpassing Orochimaru and becoming the perfect sage he couldn't, Kabuto gained access to a wide variety of unique and dangerous abilities. Like other users of sage mode, Kabuto uses nature energy to amplify his abilities in combat ranging from his physical strength to his reaction speed and awareness of the environment. Kabuto is also able to combine this ability with Jugo's Keke Genkai, which allows him to passively intake large amounts of nature energy, which prevents his Sage Mode from running out like how Naruto's and Minato's often do. This is also what gives his variant the more monstrous features like his horns, which technically makes it Sage Transformation, which is a more dramatic form of Senjutsu, which is what the Curse Seals were originally based on. In Sage Mode, Kabuto's abilities become even more deadly than before. He gains new ones like Sage Art White Rage Snake, which he can use to blind and deafen an opponent while causing them immense pain with vibrations. And Kabuto himself is immune to this attack due to his many body modifications. So this is a way in which he can incapacitate a lot of opponents, including people who rely on their dojutsu like Obito does with the Sharingan and Renegon. 
Palpatine can also imbue his Sage Chakra into the environment to manipulate any inorganic surroundings with his Sage Art and Organic Reanimation, which is also a very unpredictable technique, so much so that the fourth data book even takes note of how it caught Itachi by surprise. Kabuto also assimilated the abilities of other individuals to bolster his own ability. Kabuto assimilated Karin's DNA, which gave him the ability to heal and expanded his chakra reserves. With Suigetsu's DNA, Kabuto can liquefy his body at will, which the third data book notes makes a user practically invulnerable to physical attacks. Not counting its weakness to lightning, Kabuto was also able to assimilate Sakana and Yukon's DNA, which allows him to utilize the abilities of the other Sound 4 members even in tandem as well as Orochimaru so he can continue to assimilate the abilities of others. Some of these borrowed abilities include Kimimaru's Bone Dance, Kitomaru's Spider Webs, Jirobo's Earth Style which he used to even block Amaterasu, and Toyuya's Flute Genjutsu which was so powerful that Sasuke and Itachi who have the Mangekyo and EMS needed each other's help to break out of it. So even Obito may have trouble against this specific technique. Kabuto also displays skill with other elemental ninjutsu, being able to use water style powerful enough to wash away EMS Sasuke along with his Susano, and fireballs multiple times which he could potentially use along with Jirobo's earth style to counter Obito's fire style. Kabuto also remains a very talented medical ninja and still will often use chakra scalpels while engaging an opponent in close quarters combat. These allow him to penetrate very deep into an opponent's skin and directly attack the muscles and nerves with just a touch. So while Kabuto's power isn't as blatant or obvious as people like Edo Madara with his Susano or Obito with his Edo Jinchuriki, his wide arsenal of dangerous abilities make him a deadly and formidable opponent for anyone to go up against. Even without Edo Tensei, which he can revive and control many famous and other powerful ninja like former Kage and Akatsuki members. Now let's talk about Obito's abilities, and a little bit about how they would compare to and would interact with Kabuto's. Obito's fighting style and arsenal mainly revolve around Kamui, the ability of his MS, which allows him to become intangible or suck in or expel objects and targets to and from his pocket dimension. Combined with his insane reaction speed, this allows Obito to phase through anything an opponent may try to hit him with, and he can even remain intangible for up to 5 minutes. Obito can also quickly put an end to a fight by teleporting away his opponent and leaving them stranded in the Kamui dimension. However, Obito cannot attack and teleport while intangible and must materialize to do so, which could present Kabuto with openings he'd need to attack Obito with. Obito is also skilled enough with Kamui to use it in conjunction with other attacks like projectiles or his fire style. Obito can use portals to eject several weapons like giant kunai and shuriken he used to match Edo Madara's Jasuka beads or the chakra chains and rods he used to restrain Killer B. Obito when amplifying his fire style with Kamui can trap opponents in place with the vortex and enlarge the flames. This jutsu was actually so powerful that it was able to match Edo Madara's fire style and when it's first used, KCM Naruto needed the tails of his Kurama avatar to block the attack. Obito could potentially use this or his other fire style techniques to counter Kabuto's inorganic reanimation, which Sasuke discovered can be negated with heat. Obito, like other Uchiha, is also extremely skilled at using Genjutsu, being able to effortlessly control tail beasts like Kurama or even perfect Jinchuriki like Yagura, who can typically break Genjutsu easily due to their partnership with their tail beasts. However, since Kabuto covers his eyes and doesn't really use them, this won't be very useful against him unless Obito rips off Kabuto's eyelids or incapacitates him like Itachi did. Obito, due to possessing a body composed of Hashirama cells, possesses a lot of the first Hokage's famous abilities. Like Hashirama, Obito possesses a crazy healing factor and stamina, which was put on full display during the war arc. During any one of the numerous times Obito should have ended up dying, like getting his heart ripped out. Obito, like Hashirama, can also use wood style, but is much more crude than what we see from Hashirama or even Yamato. However, the fourth data book does tell us Obito's wood springs cutting are the highest offensive form of wood style, and he can manipulate his branches fast enough to even restrain KCM to Naruto before he can attack. While Obito doesn't use many Rinnegan abilities, we're still told he was taught all of them by Madara, and we've seen him come close to using certain ones, so I'll just focus on the ones he uses in character. Since most of you probably already know how the Rinnegan works, Obito has been shown to use the Preda Path to absorb Chakra, however it wouldn't be smart to do this against Sage Kabuto, 
since as we saw during Naruto's fight with pain, absorbing too much nature energy without being able to properly control it could lead to Obito turning into a snake. Outside of this, Obito has offered to use the human path before, which allows him to physically pull a target soul from their body just by touching them. The fourth data book also lists him as a user of the animal path summons. However, he's never been shown using this ability, and it would really only come in handy if Kabuto happens to use his giant snakes, which he doesn't really do in this form. The Rinnegan ability used most frequently by Obito is the Outer Path, which allows him to create black rods he can use as piercing weapons that can paralyze an enemy, disrupt their chakra network, and prevent them from molding more chakra. Or to spawn chakra chains he can use to restrain his enemies. Obito's Outer Path rods are actually so strong, KCM1 Naruto needed to use two Rasengan to destroy one after remarking that his restraints were even stronger than the ones Nagato used. Obito, like Nagato, can also use the Outer Path to summon the Ghetto Statue and control the Six Paths of Pain, but like the Rods, Obito's usage in these areas easily surpasses Nagato's. Unlike Nagato, Obito can summon and control the Ghetto Statue and have it fight on his behalf with zero adverse effects outside of a chakra cost. And unlike Nagato's corpse entourage, Obito can manipulate the Six Edo Jinchuriki as his Paths of Pain, allowing him to control the Biju like pawns. While most of the Renegon abilities are either not useful here or not used by Obito, he can use the human path to end the fight instantly or the outer path rise to incapacitate or restrain Kabuto or any Edo Tensei Shinobi that Kabuto might summon or he could just counter them with his Edo Jinchuriki. So in the end, attack potency wasn't all too relevant to either fighter seeing as they both have these one shot techniques and or hacks like Kabuto being able to literally eat Obito after a white rage snake or Obito having Kamui, Human Path, Black Rise, etc, etc. So take that as you will, and based on the evidence provided, you can honestly draw a conclusion to the fight either way. If you think Kabuto's battle IQ and Sage Mode can get him a dub over someone faster than him, or you think Obito just Kamui one-shots, that's up to you. Me personally, I'm siding a lot more with Obito in this particular fight. If anyone is wondering why I didn't comment on their interaction prior to the war when Kabuto summoned the Edo Akatsuki, I just didn't think it would be too relevant to the video, seeing as I was using a stronger form of both of the characters, but maybe I can comment on it in a future video. Again, be sure to like and subscribe, I had a lot of fun making this video, and if you watched all the way to the end here, I would hope you would have enjoyed the whole video, and as always, have a nice day.